Hey, thanks for stopping in. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. This is Monday. It is July 18th. What we're going to do here is we're going to focus in on penny stocks and OTC stocks. Not the same thing. Penny stocks can be any stock up to $5 and they can be on any market. So they can be on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. Though most of the stocks we look at are on the OTC market. Now all this news over here, that's all OTC market news. That is coming from the last few days. It is hand-picked news. It's not a news feed. It's just news that caught my attention and might catch yours. And if you don't have a chance to go through the news, well, there's some of it. <laughs> so we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. It's my go-to site whenever I do research on OTC stocks because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. It just makes doing research and due diligence quick and easy. So let's take a look at how the OTC market finished today. It wasn't actually a bad day, at least not compared to the major markets. The major markets had news today. Apple reported that they were not going to be hiring any more employees for a while and they were laying off a bunch. And that made the stock tumble. And when it fell, it was like it dragged most of the major markets down with it. And it's probably still falling right now. However, the OTC market had a lot of activity today. It didn't look like this affected us at all. Our dollar volume jump today, we're up to 2.4 billion. Our average is 2.1. So that's always good to see go up. Our share volume is great. We are at 13.7 billion. We're staying right in the low teens right now, which is definitely a lot better than under 10 and under five. Our trades, well, we're still under 300,000, but we're surviving and it looks like we're getting a little bit stronger, little by little. Now I've got some stocks I wanna share with you today. I think most of these are kind of flying under the radar. I could have definitely pointed out the big runners today, but that's just it. They've already had big runs and we look at a lot of those. So we're going to look at some stocks right now that didn't have the strongest volume. They did have gains. They had really strong news and catalysts. And a lot of these have strong speculation factor. It gives people room to imagine what it could be. And that always helps a stock to run. And then I'm just going to show you a few stocks that we didn't have time to focus in on. I'll show you the ticker and the catalyst, and I'll let you take it from there. All right, let's get this party started. Well, I got to admit, I'm pretty excited to share this stock with you, even if it is a mining company. But don't let that deter you. This has nothing to do with mining. This is ticker STAL, Star Alliance International Corp. Now, the company didn't have any news today. They didn't have any filings. They did have a filing about three days ago on the 15th, and they had a news press come out at the end of June. And both of those are about the exact same thing, and they are big news. And there's nothing else on the table, so it's got to be that that has this thing running. A lot like Cruzani, ticker CZNI. Last piece of news they had was also the 29th of June about their reverse merger with Baumo. But it's now the last couple of days that it's running. I don't know why there's a delay in this, but these are the only reasons sitting on the table. So I'm going to share them with you and see what you think. I think this has potential for a good short day trade, short swing, or even a good long hold. She finished the day at 32 cents with 60% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got both these green ticks I tell you to always look for, verified profile and verified transfer agent. Lots of information gets validated behind the scenes. So we like seeing these here, especially on a pink. Now, this is a mining company. They tell us here that Star Alliance International Corps is a global holding company with strong assets in the U.S., Honduras, Guatemala, and Nigeria. Star's assets include gold mines in California and Honduras with gold and lithium mines in Nigeria. In addition, and this is where we're focusing, Star searches out innovative new technologies that are eco-friendly. And that's what both of the filing and the news are all about. Something big, something very interesting. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, I told you it was under the radar. And I actually kind of was looking for a stock that was moving lightly. She normally does 25,000 shares a day. That's pretty light. And today she did 92,000 shares. I saw it when she had 76,000 shares. Folks, that's under the radar. That is seriously under the radar. Nobody's really paying attention to this right now, but it's still got 60% gains. Our share structure, what kind of float we got? Hey, hot darn, look at this. We got a low float, 19 million. 
out of 164 million. Outstanding. This looks really nice, folks. Financials. Uh, we have nothing here annually. How about quarterly? All right, they're making no money. Why it doesn't say shell risk or shell company? It would be shell risk. They're supposed to be making money and reporting it. I don't see anything here. We got a lot of research and development, which may be about their new innovative products that they're looking at. Disclosures, what do we got over here? Well, as I said, we did have a disclosure on the 15th, and I wanna share that with you. June 8th, it says this came out, but it was obviously put out on the 15th. They tell us that on May 26th, Star Alliance International signed a binding letter of intent with MEEP Trust to form a new majority-owned subsidiary of Star for the purpose of operating a new business focused on the design, manufacture, sale, and marketing of Magma line of products. The Magma products consist of proprietary material made from in Genius rock known as Barotex fiber. It's actually volcano rock. This fiber material is stronger than any other material, wood, steel, aluminum, and has the applications in automotive, marine, and construction, wind energy, aerospace, ballistics, and other industries. This material is fire resistant to 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit and resistant to moisture and chemicals. And we see here that the company is the major shareholder in this new subsidiary with 75,000 shares. Now there's a piece of news that goes with this. This came out on the 29th. It gives us a little bit more information. They tell us that Richard Carey, chairman of Star Alliance International stated, over the last six months, Stahl has taken great steps to build our company with strong acquisitions that will not only improve the company's asset value, but will over the next few months generate revenues and profits for the company. They need some revenues. In my last update, I told you about our Troy mine, the Genesis gold extraction process, and the Honduras mines, and the gold and lithium mines in Nigeria. In the last few weeks, we formed a new subsidiary, Magma International, that will provide the highest grade innovative composite manufacturing materials for worldwide distribution. The composite material is stronger, lighter and superior in performance, environmentally friendly, and recyclable. Magma's patented technology can be used in place of steel, wood, fiberglass, carbon fiber, aluminum, and even Kevlar, and only begins to melt at 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. This technology has multiple applications. We are currently finalizing the purchase of the 80,000 square foot factory in South Carolina that will house our first manufacturing plant. Our team is already working on designs of the initial products that will be made available later this year. We are extremely excited about the future growth of this company. Now they're doing more, they are actually doing more. Currently we are finalizing negotiations for an investment in style that will support our growth plans. We will be announcing the terms and conditions of this investment as soon as possible. The company's new and updated website will be fully operational shortly. And we are pleased to announce that we are moving our head office from California to Las Vegas, Nevada. The new address will also be announced shortly. We are now a global company and will continue to expand in the U.S. and overseas as opportunities arise. So this new product that they've got, let me see, it's actually right over here under their company profile, is Barotex. Right there, Barotex made out of volcanic rock. And I don't know exactly how they're doing it, folks, but they've got a product that doesn't melt. It's stronger and lighter than Kevlar. Kevlar is a very special product in itself. If it can replace wood, if it can replace something like that and be practical, this could be really big. But this is the news it's running on right now that they have this new Magma Corporation, a new investor coming in, a website coming up, and he's going to report more news. So... The stock is running now, and I think it's got more run in it. Let's go take a look at the chart. So we've jumped on over here to my free trading platform, Think or Swim. If you need one or you want a backup for Weibo or Trading Station, just go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free trading account, just keep your account open, and you've got a free trading platform to use anytime you need.
So we are looking at STAL, six month, four hour chart. And would you believe we have a high bubble back here of $6.40. Now it was real short lived, seems to be your average high is closer to about $3.275, somewhere in there. She has been falling all this time, hit a low bubble of 16 cents, and right now we're double that at 32 cents. Now let me focus in a little bit here so you can see what's actually happening in that very tight band. You can see she is falling. She's under the 200 and she's under the 50. Looks like she just got on top of our 200 haul. That's the only difference I see here. The 200 haul, that's a lot like the 200 day SMA. They both take 200 days and average them out. But the 200 haul puts more credence on current prices. So the line is normally closer to the price. She then cracked that, fell very low, and then now is taking off. And as you can see, under the PPO, the percentage price oscillator, which is a lot like the MACD, but it doesn't work on the price itself. It works on the percentage of the price. And then my ADX, which measures trend strength. We look for these to actually split apart when we want growth. Whenever you see the blue start going up and the red start going down, you get some real strong growth. And that's what we got going on right now. And our RSI is just ripping on the four hour. Let's jump down to that 20 day, one hour view. So she's been pretty planted, just sitting here underneath the 10, not doing a whole heck of a lot. Once she got above the 10, she started pushing. She got on top of the 50, look how big the bars got, and she is ripping towards the 200. She actually tagged it once, she's going for it right now, and all of our SMAs are in great shape. They're all turning up, and all of our technicals, every single one of them is pointing up right now. Doesn't matter which technical it is, if they're pointing up, it's good. Let's come on into that five minute, five day view. So it wasn't until yesterday we had a little bit of push we jumped from about uh, 18 cents up to 20 cents. So we only moved two cents yesterday, but this morning she took off. We haven't had a ton of volume, but she has been pushing, right? We only had 90,000 shares. And by the time I saw it, it had 76, which was probably just that. So even this itty bitty no volume, I mean, it's there. We just can't see it. Look, she is pushing up on that little itty bit of volume that we can't even see here. So she is still climbing. All of the technicals look good. Everything is riding right right now. I honestly think she's under the radar. I think this bad boy has got more to give in the short run. And because of what they've got, I think this could be like a space age product of some sort that could really have a lot of appeal depending how they use it. We don't know yet. We've got to wait for that information. Now I'm going to back up a wee bit here. I can't do it there. I want to get some. Oh, I do have them here. There is our... Uh, Supports going up. I grabbed these on the four hour, I believe it was. Yeah, uh, let me see if I can show you where I got those from. I'm looking for a place where the price stops and changes direction over and over again. And you can see right here, it fell, went back up, fell, went back up. Split this one right in the middle, banged its head, banged its head. So that's how we got this one. And it is at 39 cents. So I think our next target from where we're at 32 is 39 cents. After that, you can be looking for 45 cents. And then of course, our average right there is at 50 cents. And if we back out what sort of big push, if she was to actually take off, where could we see her run to? Well, we can get up to, she broke right there. And let's see if that rides in here about, oh heck, $1.17. $1.17 looks like its first strong kick, maybe even $1.12. $1.12 looks better. So if she breaks 50 cents, she may be heading off to $1.12. So this is a great short play, I think, and I think it's going to be a good long hold. But as the information comes out, you'll be able to determine that. So keep your eyes on STAL. Watch the volume climb and watch that price take off. Wash, rinse, repeat. This stock is just like the one we looked at. This is VPLM, VoipPal.com, Inc. This stock, I believe, is under the radar. 
I believe it has potential to be a great day trader short swing. I also think it is an outstanding play for a long hold. And I'm looking at about a year, year and a half at the most. Now the company does have news today. It's just the most current piece in a very long saga, virtually a year of the same kind of news that is just evolving and it's getting better and better. This company finished today at 0 0.01715 with only 16% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We call that the better tier because you got to audit your financials. Pinks don't have to audit. We just take their word for the numbers they give us. You want the actual factual numbers? Get a QB. They're using CPAs to do their financials. They have a verified profile and a transfer agent, so that's all great. And they have independent directors. Now, you only need independent directors if you're going to uplist. They may have already used them to get to the QB. They could use them again if they have plans to go up. So what does this company do? This is a perfect description. VoigtPal.com is a publicly traded corporation incorporated in 1997 in the state of Nevada, Waco, Texas. VoigtPal is a technical leader in the broadband voice over internet protocol. Basically, they have a portfolio of technology, approximately 51, 54 patents for VoIP. VoIP is voice over internet protocol. It's how you talk on the internet. That's how your voice gets over the internet. And this company seems to have a lot of that technology in their portfolio. So what was the relative volume around this company today with the news that they had? Well, now here's a good jump. We went from 1.1 million, her daily average over the last month, to just over 22 million. So we're looking at 18 times her normal volume. Share structure. Oh, well, that's not all that good, is it? We have over a billion shares here, just a smidge over a billion, though I don't think it matters. So we've got a ton of shares here. Financials, what sort of money are they making? Uh, absolutely nothing and absolutely nothing. So they haven't made money in years and they are in business and it doesn't say shell risk over here. So that's a little bit curious. Uh, disclosures, we got anything new over here? Financials are current and yes, we do have an 8K that came out four days ago on the 14th of this month. I've already taken a peek at this. They inform us that they are increasing the authorized shares from 3 billion to 3.5 billion. Now let's go jump over to that news. Now they got lots of news here and it is basically a saga. It is the same sort of news that is just progressing and they're showing us the story as it's going along and the story is getting better and better for them. Now, I don't know exactly when this all began, but you'll get the drift starting right here. This is in September of last year. VoigtPal takes a positive step towards remaining in the Western District of Texas. They're talking about the courts. They're gonna stay in that court system with its seven mobile gateway patent infringement lawsuits. So they're suing somebody for infringement over their VoIP patents. Who are they suing? They're suing Amazon, Apple, Google, Facebook, WhatsApp, T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T. They're also suing Samsung, Hawaii. They sued Richard Kippings and Locksmith Financial Corporation. They also sued Verizon, T-Mobile, and Twitter. Yes, folks, all of those companies were sued by this company because all of them were using a VoIP technology online. And this company says that they own virtually all the patents to the VoIP that they're using. Now, what is going on here is things are increasingly getting better for VoIP. Definitely getting better. Look here, this is September. Recent favorable court decisions. Doesn't really matter what it is, it was favorable, right? Up here, judge rules in favor of Voight Powell. Voight Powell receives favorable claim construction ruling its patent infringement case against Amazon, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Now, I do want to take a look at this with you. Now, I picked this piece of news because it has a lot of information. You get a good feel for what's going on in the courts, and they put a projection on the table for the future. This came out June 7th. Voight Powell is pleased to announce that the company has received a favorable ruling in the claim construction hearing that was held on June 3rd, 2022 in the U.S. District Court for Western District of Texas in Voight Powell's case versus Amazon, Verizon, and T-Mobile.
In a final order issued by Judge Allen Albright, the court has adopted a majority of Voight Powell's proposed constructions for most of the terms in the dispute in the litigation. The court's order has been posted on the company's website. With the conclusion of the claim construction hearing, Voight Powell's lawsuit and is now entering the discovery phase and are moving towards an expedited jury trial in approximately 12 months. A claim construction hearing is you having to prove you have a case. You've got to show them that you have the rights and you have been infringed. And if you can't prove that, they just throw it out and don't even let you sue. Well, this company's gotten over that hurdle. And most lawsuits have a very difficult time getting over this hurdle. Emil Malik, the CEO of VoIPAL, stated, We are very pleased with this outcome of last week's claim construction hearing. Getting past the claim construction phase in these cases is a significant milestone in any patent infringement lawsuit. We look forward to the next year as we now move closer to a trial where we can present our infringement and damage claims to a jury for a final verdict. Patience is a virtue. Now think about that, folks. They are suing all those big name companies, Amazon, WhatsApp, everybody. You saw them all. And I don't know how much they're suing them for. Don't have a clue, but those are big companies. You can ask for a lot, can't you? So that was that piece of news. The other piece of news I do want to show you, which is just kind of interesting, is this one here. U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California rules in favor of VoIP. Now, check this out. This is a little weird to me. VoIP Pal granted Twitter a covenant not to sue, and the court granted VoIP Pal's motion to dismiss the case on that basis. We have no idea why they're not going to sue Twitter. Following the dismissal, however, Twitter brought a motion against Voight Powell for attorney fees. In a recent order dated July 1, 2022, the court sided with Voight and denied Twitter's motion for fees. I just find it a little ridiculous that if you have a company excuse you from being sued, that you turn around and sue them again for fees that they obviously could afford. And then this last piece of news that came out today, the court ruled in favor of Voight Powell denying Amazon's request for reconsideration. Amazon is still trying to say, no, 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 we didn't infringe on nothing. And the courts are past that. It's like, forget it, buddy. You and everybody else are getting sued. So now they're going to go pick a jury. They're going to get a date and they are going to ask for money from all of those companies. And we have no clue what it could be, but when you add it all up from all the companies, it could be a huge windfall. And I'll tell you what, HCMC ran for a long time because of their lawsuit against uh, PM, I believe it was, Philip Morris, because there was an infringement on a vape unit. And it just ran and ran silly for a while in hopes, in hopes that that money was gonna come in. I never did believe it. However, this is a whole different ball game here. They have gotten over that big hurdle. Let's go take a look at the chart and see what it looks like. You knew this was going to be a six-month, four-hour chart for VPLM. Lots of bounces. People get excited when they see their company is suing a big-name company. Man, all they see is dollar signs in front of their eyes, right? And they are suing a lot of big-name companies. And they've had a lot of favorable judgments from the courts. So there's been a lot of happy investors here recently. That's why we're so high over to 200. But it's been quiet for a while. It's been a couple months since they had news and you can see it has fallen. People like to stay stimulated, it's consolidated, and then it just shot like a rocket today. Blasted off over everything it has done in the last six months. Speaking of that, let's take a look at the one year. All right, so we do have a high here of 2.8 cent. I've got a bar already drawn up there. We hit a high of 2.4 cents. So we're getting close to that, and that will be a resistance when we get to it. Let's take a look at that six-month, four-hour again. So our technicals are real strong. Our PPO is crossing over just like the MACD. That is beautiful. It is coming up. Our ADX showing strength of trend is coming up. Our MACD is coming up and our RSI is coming up. It really looks strong right now. Let's take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. Well, not a lot going on here. You can see that our SMAs were coming downhill. So obviously, the price was falling here, was underneath everything, did get on top of our 50-day SMA, back underneath until today. And interesting enough, it doesn't look like it jumped until maybe halfway through the day. It was not at the start of the day. 
Technicals are real strong on the hourly, though the uh, RSI has dipped. It is down to 62. We don't want to see it go under 60. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. Very docile, just sitting around the 50 here. And it was at noon, sure was. It was at noon, it jumped from a penny and a half up to two and a half cents. So you're looking at roughly 70% gains. And then it fell fast all the way down to the 50 day SMA, which is where it started. However, because of this big jump, it lurched that 50 day up. So now we're actually sitting on a higher place than where we started. And it looks like she's bouncing on it. Now, whether she's gonna go under right now or not, I don't know. The 20 looks like it's pushing down and all of the technicals look like they're pushing down. So it very well could dip down lower, folks. I'm not gonna actually project where this one's gonna go, but I think with this sort of news, Every time a news press comes out, it's going to jump and bounce. I put this on your news watch list. And then you want to consider down the road, 12 months down the road. When they say they finally get into court against this company, against that company, you're going to want to be paying attention because they could get millions of dollars. I mean, literally from each company. So this company could explode. Keep your ear to the track and listen. There's gonna be a lot going on with this company over the next 12 months. Here is another company that I would like to say is under the radar, but somehow I don't think it is. This is ticker IDGC, ID Global Core. Now, they did not have any news today. They haven't had news since April, and we'll take a look at those, and they've had no filings. What they did have was two tweets from the CEO, and they're perfect tweets because they give us information, but no facts. It allows us to speculate on what's going to happen, and if you've been watching my show, you know we've identified many stocks that run hard simply on speculating from a tweet. And that's what's going on right now. So this company finished the day at triple zero four with a hundred percent gains. That means she started off at triple zero two. She's on the pink tier. She is current and she's got both those green ticks. I'm always telling her to look for So she looks great. Now this is a holdings company. That means they go out and they find these small companies that have great ideas and they foster them. They build them up, give them whatever they need until they can do business on their own. And then they spin them out. So that's the kind of business they are doing. And what was the relative volume today? Holy cow, <laughs> not under the radar, just a low price. Normally they do 11.7 million shares a day. Today they did 1.5 billion shares. So I don't think we can call it under the radar. Share structure, oh my God, that hurts. 11.1 billion shares in the float. Wow, the float's bigger than all the shares she moved today. Goodness gracious, that's too many shares. Financials, what do we got going on here? Well, they are making money. They made more a few years ago. Uh, through the COVID years, it was a little thin. Now they're doing $471,000. They got to keep three hundred fifty-six. dollars That was from last year quarterly. Well, they did $56,000. We know it's thousands because they tell us to put three zeros behind these numbers and gave away half of it. They got to keep $28,000. So they're not making a ton of money. Disclosures, anything new over here? Not since 2018, new. So let's go take a look at that news. So they do have a wide variety of news because they're a holdings company. Each time they get a subsidiary, make a deal for that subsidiary, they've got different types of news here. And we're not doing a deep dive, so I'm not going to get into all of that. But I do want to look at the most recent pieces of news just so you can get a feel for where the company's at right now. This one came out in March. ID Global Core announces details of annual report, including Novita gross profit increase of 3,256%, one of their subsidiaries. They also said that they did an increase in revenue of 250%. So they are growing. Though it doesn't look like they're making a whole lot, they are growing fast. Then we have a piece of news that came out April 4th. Azure Blockchain, a wholly owned subsidiary of ID Global Core, announces a new business plan. We're just going to poke our head in here so you get a feel for it. ID Global Core is pleased to announce a new business plan launched by its new technology team, which includes offering hosting, online marketing, equipment sales, and consulting for various cryptocurrency mining operations, including the design and implementation of our own crypto mining facility. 
The new Azure blockchain team has designed and operated the largest military grade EMP protected micro suite data center in the world. And they've got a lot of strong information in this one piece of news. And then looking at the very last piece of news, Azure Blockchain wholly owned subsidiary announces sales and marketing agreement with worldwide wholesaler of crypto mining rigs. So you can see they are in the crypto mining section, at least with that one company, Azure Blockchain. But none of this is really why the company is going to run or was running today. Why is it running today? Because of those tweets from the CEO. He put out two of them today, one seven hours ago and one 10 hours ago. That was like nine in the morning and 12 noon. The first one he put out said, IDGC team working hard, finalizing multiple acquisitions. Stay tuned. Oh, that's a doozy for speculation. Then the company has no intention to dilute. And I reiterate, big acquisitions that we have worked on for the last several months. A little broken English there, but there you go. They've got acquisitions coming up and he's telling us he's going to tell us about it soon. We don't know how soon, but that's why it ran today and it'll probably run tomorrow just based on this speculation. And when he comes out with the news, if it's multiple acquisitions, chances are it's going to run again. Let's go take a look at that chart. This too is a six month, four hour chart for IDGC. We got a high bubble back here of double zero one one, a low, it's on the floor, triple zero one. And today we are at triple zero four. What a bounce. That's 400% off the low bubble, right? So she is a triple zero. So you're going to see that picket fence. She definitely hasn't got any strength. She fell right down to the floor and is bouncing off of it. Thank goodness. Here comes the 200 day SMA to pick her up and it got right down on top of her and she launched. Technicals look really good here. Now, I have a strong suspicion <laughs> that CEOs will watch the charts and when they see it is close to a breakout and it's just about ready to get over the 200, they'll throw a tweet out there to provoke it to do that. I can't prove it, just a suspicion. Technicals look really strong here. We're just about ready to go into overbought and everything else is pointing up. 20 day, one hour view. Oh, picket fence straight across on the 50 doing nothing. Yesterday, she actually had a bounce just before the day ended. I'm not quite sure what did that. And today she flew. We have no volume, little bit of volume yesterday. And would you believe that is 1.5 billion shares showing in that volume there. And look at that. Our technicals are even stronger on the one hour, much better. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute. So there's our low bubble. Boy, we are on the floor, triple zero one, and she hit triple zero five. That was a 500% gain right there. And she's going sideways now, bouncing from four to five, four to five, because that's what triple zeros do. Now, if this gets a little bit more volume, a little bit more excitement, you could probably watch it ride this 50 day up. And she'll just go six, seven, eight, come back down to six, go back up to eight. She's gonna be bouncing around, folks, because she's in the triple zeros. Our technicals, um, they're mid ground right now. This looks like it's about ready to come down underneath the red. We see a fall on the trend. The MACD is very low and the RSI is falling. However, we did have a pullback right there at the end of the day. So I would keep my eye on the Twitter account. I'd be looking for that tweet. When that tweet comes out, this is probably going to pop. But tomorrow, just watch and see if the volume comes in. That was a lot of volume today. 1.5 billion shares. Who knows what it will be tomorrow. This could just be one of those stocks people want to play with. And you'll want to play if they're willing to pay right? All right, let's go take a look at some stocks. We didn't have time to focus in on, but I'm going to show you the ticker and I'm going to show you the reason that I think they're going to run. And before we run away from the charts, I've got two of them right here. This is Dr. Foods, ticker DRFS. I covered this just the other day. They have been in the news, but they are continually growing. We've got five days here. She's gone from double zero five up to uh, one and a half. So that's 300% gains here in the last five days. She looks strong. The technicals are pulling back just a wee bit right now. She has been consolidating, but you can see she's riding this 50 day SMA and she's right on it. She's worth watching. 
Another one. This is WNFT. We've talked to this, about this quite a few times, and I said to keep your eye on this. I thought something might happen, and something did. She took a huge drop, and the reason she took the drop was news came out. They're doing a merger, a merger with an NFT company. He hasn't told us who it is, but they can't do it until some current litigation is completed. Once that litigation is done, then they're going to go forward with the merger. So she took a big drop on that news and has been sitting down here all that time. Well, folks, she fell from 25 cents down here to five cents. That's a 500% drop or a 500% gain when she just gets back to here. And you know what merger news does. And you know that NFTs are hot. And this is supposed to be the first pure play NFT stock on the market. So I think this is worth watching and considering taking a small hold on right now since it's so bloody cheap. Right. So you interested in some leftovers? Hmm? I got two stocks here that we could have talked about, but because of the time constraint, we just couldn't get to them. But rather than just toss them aside, I'm going to show you the tickers and the catalyst and just let you take it from there. The first one we're looking at is a Chinese company. This is ticker QD Quidian Inc. If you are watching your scans today, this is no stranger to you. It was jumping and bumping. This is a New York Stock Exchange penny stock. Now, they did have news today, but it wasn't the news that really got my attention. It was their financials. They did $259 million last year and got to keep over $200 million of it. But when you go back, three years ago, they did $1.1 billion. So they've had a huge drop through COVID, and I think there's room for this company to grow. This is the news that came out today. Quidian Inc., a consumer-oriented technology company in China, Today provided an update on its ready-to-cook meal business under the brand of QD Food, including its operational progress and recent incentives. Since inception, QD Food has made remarkable progress. As of July 18th of this year, the company has 15 warehousing, assembly, and packaging facilities, delivering products to over 200 cities and towns across China. As I said, I think there's room to grow here. The other stock is a recent bankruptcy. This company fell from the OTCQX, the best tier, all the way down here to the pink because they filed bankruptcy. That is what the Q on the end of it means. Now, maybe you know this company. This is Voyager Digital. Voyager Digital is a cryptocurrency trading platform online. They also own Coinify. Matter of fact, let me give you a bit of information about this company. First off, they own coins themselves. This is crypto assets that they hold. All these coins, that is 25,171 Bitcoin valued at $1.1 billion. All these coins, that's a total of $3.4 billion. They own coins, they loan coins, they stake coins, and they sell coins. And if we come up here for a little bit more information, where are we at? These are all their subsidiaries right here, all these different Voyagers around the world and the Coinifies. And taking a look at their most recent asset number, right there. Total assets, $5.9 billion. Folks, they may be in bankruptcy, but I don't think they're going anywhere. I think the company is solid. I think they've had some troubles right now, but I think when you've got that much money in assets, those coins are still in their pocket. It's not like they're broke. I don't know why they're filing bankruptcy, but they did. Take advantage of it. So I think a lot of those stocks are good plays for short term. Some of them are great plays for long term. I think most of them are under the radar, though I wouldn't call the one with 1.5 billion under the radar. I would just call it a great price. And if it's going to continue to run, 0004 is a great price if it has catalyst. That is an outstanding price. I hope this information helps you. I hope you do more DD. You know I did not do any deep dives on any of these, so there's a lot more to know. And the more you know, <laughs> the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.